What's up, my fellow YouTubers? So they had um, Thanksgiving sales, and uh, so almost right away I went right for the movies because I'm a huge movie buff fan, and uh, I I couldn't help but see this. It's at towards the end of the bottom. Um, obviously, it goes in alphabetical order, but it's one of those things where you, you scroll down, and it's eight dollars for both seasons, like each. So sixteen dollars for. Um, like two seasons of a historical guy that, you know, whether you believe in him or not, which I do, um, he impacted, well, you can't run from the fact that it's 2023. You can't run from the fact that right now uh, there's a lot going on in Israel. Obviously, something big's going on, right? Um, and, you know, if you're a believer what the Bible says, he's coming back. Um me personally, I, I'm a Christian. I'm not the perfect example of what a Christian should be. Don't get me wrong. I, but I, I definitely know who he is. I, I've read the Bible. I'm a New International Version Bible person. Uh, I've even gotten approached by Mormons that, it's funny, they're trying to convert me to their faith, and they're actually interested in what I believe, which is the New International Version, and they read the Red Letter Edition. Nothing wrong with that either, but... Um, Basically, like, you know, I guess the Catholics will say, you know, there's purgatory, you know, like, in other words, a, sec a second chance, and Protestants are more like, you know, you either go up or down, heaven or hell, and which it kind of puts you in on edge, right? You know, like, you feel like, oh, my man, if I screw up, man, I'm, I'm definitely effed, right? Um, but either way, if, you, if you've had an upbringing... Like, with me, it was Catholic, got all my, got my baptism, got, had all my communions, I could... Someday I do want to marry a Filipino girl. That's just my goal. That's just my, I think it's going to happen if I could financially make it happen. But right now, obviously, I can't with the going through the bankruptcy. But the whole point is that if you have an upbringing, you more or less kind of know who he is. Um, and some of the groups I've been part of, they kind of dumb, they try to dumb you down and they try to dumb down how other people are. I think for the most part, People know who he is, and they can decide for themselves if they accept or reject him or not. But we're put in a position where we're supposed to be the smart ones that know about him more, telling other people about it that don't know him at all or are dumbed down. But once you get out in the real world and you start talking about it, for the most part, 99.9% .9 of the people know who he is. Um, so, like, I, you know, religion and politics is such a... a uh, touchy subject for one thing and for another thing I'm 48 I, I kind of <clears throat> understand where people are coming from because I've been there myself um, I haven't been in the church in a while um, I've fallen away I've gotten sick of treated like sh being treated like shit because somebody's expecting you to turn the other cheek all the time and be nice to those who aren't nice to them who aren't nice to you back right that's the expectation if you read the Bible you Okay, now if people know that you're going to do that ahead of time, they're going to treat you like shit because they're going to figure, oh, you're just going to take it and take it and take it. Well, guess what? We're human beings. We get sick of fucking turning the other cheek all the time. We get sick of taking people's shit. I don't care who you are, what walk of life you are, you get sick of it, okay? Um, whereas if you just stumble upon, like, Satanism, they say, hey, be, be kind to those who deserve it. Don't waste your breath on those who don't. It's in us all to do that. Um... What LeVay did, in my opinion, is kind of twist it around and make you feel like if you feel that way, you're a Satanist. No, that's not true. Everybody, no matter what walk of life they are, that is part of us. Okay? And the reason why, and I'm not in no position to preach, okay, whatsoever, but the reason why Jesus said, in my opinion, this is my opinion, why we have to be born again. Now, it's not literally born again throughout the mother's womb. It's it's a transition that we go through is because it's in us all to be kind to those who deserve it and not waste our breath to those who don't. In other words, being quote unquote born again is like, okay, now I'm going to try to be different. I'm going to try to transition to treating others how I want to be treated, um, hanging out with the homeless or trying to be nice to my enemies or trying to pray for those who persecute me instead of what putting a destruction spell on them, right? That, 
that a Satanist might do, right? It, it's it's not easy because it goes against what we are as human beings, and for the most part, anyways. Um, that's just my take on it. Now, I'm not saying that I I'm in a position to preach again, but I just I know it. Do I always turn the other cheek? Am I always you know, not kind to those who deserve it if somebody's being a dick to me. No, um, I'm expected to try it. Um, the other thing that I, I understand is, I guess this is a, a shoot in the view on religion. You know, I'm not bashing it or nothing, or anything like that. But I think a lot of people don't talk about PTSD, um, which is the image of Jesus, the mention of Jesus, the going to a church it brings back for a lot of people almost like returning to a crime scene, right? If you get, you know, somebody does something to you at a crime scene, right? And you return to that crime scene 30 years later, you're going to remember what that person does to you, right? It's the same thing with going back to church. What you're thinking of is all the bad experiences that you've had as a teenager and it comes back to you, even though later on in life, those same people really aren't there. But it's a sense um, on both sides, like, for one thing, people that have been abused have a sense of those people. So you kind of sense those people within the church without even knowing them. And at the same time, the people that are the abusive type have a sense of the victim, right? So they might have a sense of, oh, I can pick on this guy, but not this person. Like a sense because you've been there before. I know this sounds fucking weird, but like... um. So you start thinking about all the bad experiences that you've had because the image of it conjures it up in your head and you're like, that's why people stay away from it. Why go there and, and relive all that bad experiences again? Um, that's why. And, and the other reason why I think a lot of people have fallen away and it's in the prophecy that like toward the end, there'd be a lot of apostasy on earth. I think a lot of it is like back in the 90s, everybody's waiting for the end of the world, the 2000s. So everybody's getting everybody's kind of like, you know, uh, waiting for the end of the world, getting prepared, I want to say. So everybody's going to church expecting that by the year 2000, when all the computers mess up, that somebody from the sky is going to snatch them up in the clouds, right? The rapture is going to happen before the tribulation. We're all set, right? Okay. It's going to happen in 2000 because every 2000 years, right? Um, and then it doesn't. Right? So you're waiting for a guy to come back, and it, he doesn't. Now, if, if you're at a job and you're waiting for your boss to pay you, you expect your boss to pay you every Friday, right? I, I, I get paid every Wednesday. I know. I expect exactly how much I'm going to get if I do overtime. And if I ever get, you know, if I don't get my pay exactly how I'm supposed to get it, uh, I go to Human Resources and say, hey, how come I'm this short and they'll reimburse me, right? That's exactly. Boom. Well, let's say you're waiting for the boss to come and pay you after working for a week, and he doesn't. How long are you going to wait before you get another job or before you go to human resources or before you go to somewhere and say, look, I'm not getting paid. What's going on here? And how long do those people think that it's okay to do that to you because of what you believe, and I'm still going to screw you? How long are you going to allow that person to do that, right? Right. You're going to quit that job and or maybe sue that person and get another job and go somewhere else. And if somebody tells you, whoa, 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 wait, 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 I'm coming back. Okay, hold on. Maybe you'll have patience or maybe you'll say, screw this, I'm moving on with my life. And that's what I, I think a lot of people have done. Um, you're waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen. Okay, yeah, he's coming back. Okay, he's coming back. He's coming back. It's been 30 years now. Well, hey, look what's going on in Israel. Look what this. Look what that's happening. I'm not gonna let it. You know, I'm not gonna let it uh, bother me to the point where I can't enjoy life. Right? I'm gonna move on with my life. Uh, I think to a point that's what a lot of people have become, or that's why a lot of people go from being Christians to being atheists. A, a lot of the atheists that I've debated on, debated with in message boards were Christians and then they were atheists and they persecuted me because they wanted me to accept the theory of evolution. And that's the other point. So on one point, I think we're waiting for somebody to come back 2000 
2000 arrives, nothing happens, right? Everybody's like, screw this, right? I'm not waiting around. I'm moving on with my life. And the other thing is science is evolving, right? We're finding things that we didn't know 30 years ago. We're finding more facts that solidify the theory of evolution, which says, okay, if we all came from apes, right? Then there was no Adam and Eve. If there was no Adam and Eve, then the Bible says that if, you know, one thing's wrong, that everything's wrong. Well, if there's no Adam and Eve, then what else is wrong, right? What else is the Bible lying about, right? The, the problem with this is, and it's right here, it's, it's Jesus himself, okay? The evidence is the churches themselves. Where are the churches history? Okay, if you go back to the history of churches, it all leads back to Jesus. And it, uh, there's no denying that 2023, since when? Since who walked the earth? Okay, Jesus. That's the main point. And I, I think what science is trying to do is explore these planets and go back in time to make a liar out of the, the present time, if they can do that. And that's where a lot of the the persecution, the hate is coming from. And uh, me, I, you know, I, I got to start going back to church. Like I said, I'm in no position to preach. I think I'm just, I'm talking, I guess, from personal experience of the why of things, what I understand now that I didn't understand when I was a teenager. Um, and it makes sense. Uh, at the same time, there's always going to be a part of me that's always interested in Revelation, the end of the world. Now, I'm not saying that I became an atheist. Uh, um, I'm saying that off and on throughout my life, I've had a lot of bad experiences when I was a teenager that I think have given me PTSD that when I walk into a church, I think about, oh my God, you know, what I went through as a teenager, getting singled out, getting judged, getting kind of almost like gaslighted, like everybody in here feels a different way than you do. Um, and then finding out that that's bullshit. They just, they're just better at hiding it. Um, but again, I was a teenager at the time. Now I don't have the long hair. I don't always just, I don't carry a snake around. You know what I mean? Um, I'm less, I guess, less quote unquote vulnerable to being singled out or picked on. Like somebody sees me. Okay. You know, I'm a regular dude. Leave me the fuck alone. Right. I'm here to worship and that's it. Um, and Anyways, though, but this this documentary, um, it's really interesting because it, it, I'm kind of surprised it was made by CNN. I, I always thought CNN were anti-Christian, and maybe I'm just wrong in that area or ignorant in that area, but it was done by CNN, and it's just, I haven't seen it yet, um, but it's about the stuff that is really interesting in the Bible, and I guess the science, science even goes back and looks at it, you know, the true cross, what, what happened, uh, this, that's season one, and then season two um, gets into stuff like that, raising Lazarus, and again, like, it's history, and you can't deny it, okay, at one point, a guy named Jesus walked the earth, um, it's, I think it's, I don't think you have to hold people by the hand, I think people are smart enough to decide whether they believe in him or not, or what they think of him and or not um and yes uh christians do get persecuted i've even been persecuted for it but i i think the most damaging thing for me wasn't other atheists or satanists persecuting me for being a christian the most damaging thing for me was other christians talking down to me like they were better than me i think that damages you more spiritually than an atheist or a Satanist persecuting you for being a Christian. I know that sounds fucking weird, but that's just my take on it. Um, and the other thing is, like, some of the biggest assholes in my life have been other Christians. And some of the most coolest people, best friends that I've ever had, have been people that dress in black, wear an upside-down pentagram. They treat me like a friend. They've actually gone out of their way to call me to say, hey, how's it going? Rather than, and I've been told by Christians not to hang out with people like that, okay, and they're the same people that never bother to go out of their way to say, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? See what I mean? Um, and that's the other thing that kind of shaped my 
belief in people that it's not always what you believe that makes you a, a good friend. It's your behavior, right? And I've, I've seen that on Facebook. Um, and uh, so I, I guess I'm just ranting. I'm just, it's, it's like a blog on my own personal experiences with it. I've had good and bad. Um, it, I went from being Catholic and then I was part of a born again Christian group and it, it taught me a lot. I'm, I'm glad I learned it from more from there with the new international version, but at the same time, and again, I was a teenager. I had long hair. I was quote unquote rebellious. It was during the satanic panic era. I was labeled as something that I wasn't. And I was treated like a criminal for the fucking music that I liked and the books that I read. But I think what bothered them the most was that I was educated and they couldn't dumb me down. And on one hand, they were trying to dumb me down. And on the other hand, it was like putting a gun to my head. You either believe this or else. And then it's like the undermining threats. And all while, you know, wearing these conservative things. So you can never tell that the same people in the mall that were like, hey, how's it going? We're the same people behind closed doors when you go to visit them that are threatening your soul if you do this or do that, you know. Um, but it's just my experiences stay with me to the point where, you know, when I walk, watch a documentary on serial killers like Ed Gein and Ed Gein's mother, I'm like, I can't help but think of certain people in my past that were similar to that. You know, you either do this or that. And, um, you know, I never turned out rebellious. I think, you know, but it stays with me. It, it, the understanding of, of the things that you grew up with, I guess there really is a lot of hypocrisy in the church, but a lot of people were trying to pin that on me. Like I was the hypocrite. Okay. Look, if I really looked close enough, which I have, I'm educated. Okay. I've read a lot of books and I still read a lot of books. I can see behind the curtain. Okay. You know what I mean? I can see the hypocrisy in you judging me, okay? And that that is what the Bible says, you know, do not judge or you too will be judged. It's like one of many circles within circles, I guess, kind of like that. Um, and I know I'm ranting. I'm just going on and on about uh, religion in general, how I feel about it. Um, I, I'm glad that I, I'm not ashamed of the fact that I accepted Christ. I'm not ashamed of the fact that I'm a Christian, but I'm not saying that I'm a a perfect example of what a Christian should be either. I'm not in a position to preach, but if somebody approaches me and asks me about it, I know about it enough to talk to them about revelation, the end of the world. And I, I think there's a part of us that just wants to wake up, have our coffee, go to work, come home, eat, be left the fuck alone. And on our time off, wants to just play our video games, whatever we do for fun without worrying about the end of the world happening or, this huge nuclear war breaking out. But then lately, man, you can't run from it, right? You look on the, you look at what's happening. It's like, oh my God, maybe not even in my backyard, but it's happening in other places of the world, right? Um, it's kind of scary, but at the same time, I think we as human beings, we don't want to be scared. We don't want to live in fear. We just want to live our lives, a normal life. Now that's not saying that, you know, we have to be whatever, like, that we have to be these celebrities that whatever that have everything. Okay. We just want a simple life without being bothered. But then there's the other, like when you see what's happening with Israel and you read the Bible, it's like, Oh my God, wow, it's happening. Um, so it's not like, I'm not like being preachy whatsoever. I'm just kind of discussing, I, I guess, open discussion. So you as the viewer, uh, let me know what you think. Um, but if you're interested in, this it's on sale for black friday for like eight dollars a piece which i think is pretty cool for what six episodes a piece 43 minutes that's what you know like the whole thing's about what one two about three hours long the whole thing is at least yeah i'd say no six, about nine hours long right yeah um so, yeah, I think it's worth it. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you think. Have you had good good religious experiences, bad ones? Are you just like, ah, screw this? Or are you like, ah, I fell away, then I came back? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Uh, and I'll have more blogs to come.
Peace out, my fellow YouTubers.